Hey guys, so I've got a new distribution of sorts to show you today. Gparted Live 0.19.0-1 Stable Release. It's a um, Debian SID based operating system built for the sole purpose of hosting one piece of software, Gparted. Now, many of you, in fact, maybe even most of you might have heard of Gparted and even have used it. But for those of you that don't know, Gparted is a piece of software designed for organizing your hard disk drive's partitions. In some operating systems, rather than have just a solid chunk of your hard disk drive to play around with, it seems to make sense for some operating systems to divide your hard disk drive into sections. Sections for deliberately designed for, say, organizing data, or uh, for storing your personal documents, or for storing the software that you install on your machine. And it has the added benefit, among many others, of being able to reformat um, single individual partitions without affecting the data on other partitions. It's a very useful tool and just about any techie I know has used this at some point in their life or at least some kind of equivalent. But in my experience I've never had any problems with either the Gparted software or the Gparted Live operating system. I hesitate to actually call it an operating system because it's not a full operating system, it's just a very lightweight one. So as you can see here I've got the press release up and uh, yeah, like I say, it's designed to be a very portable distribution. The idea is that you might burn it to a CD or DVD or even a USB and just keep it in your, you know, uh, keep it alongside your other diagnostics tools. It's it's essential in an emergency. I've used it many, many times to uh, to just fix a computer that where the hard disk has just messed itself up somehow. And really, rather than actually switching out for a new hard disk drive, uh, you actually just have to completely get rid of the partitions and then restructure it yourself. Um, it's uh, That sounds a lot more technical than it actually is. I've always found it to be highly user-friendly, straightforward, stable, and um, and like I say, I do hesitate on calling this an operating system because it's, it's a partial operating system. It's designed to be very light. It's designed to run on just about any PC. It's designed to run as a, light, uh, as a live distribution, not to be installed to your computer. And of course, it runs as root. So you can do a lot of damage if you don't know how to use this piece of software. So whenever you do use it, for the love of God, just make sure you read the documentation around it and understand how it works because you can completely obliterate your hard disk drive. Um, not beyond repair, but you can certainly do um, a lot of damage. But anyway, uh, enough of this. It clocks in at 181 megabytes, so it is designed to be very, very small. What I tend to do with it is find just an old uh, USB that I might have got from like a promotional event, which is only a couple of hundred megabytes, and then just put Gparted on that and leave it in a drawer somewhere. Uh, I've also got it on CDs and DVDs because I've got old versions as well, which work just as well, but um, it'd be interesting to see what stuff this brings to the table. Um, but out of all the distributions out there, Gparted Live is the slow and steady kind, uh, in the same vein as maybe Debian and um, and ones that don't change too much over time, but rather just refine themselves. Okay, so as you can see, I've booted straight into the live CD slash live USB. I'm of course using my virtual machine, um, but it gives you just generally the same impression. Now it comes with a whole bunch of different boot modes. You can boot it directly to RAM, and that's quite nifty because it means that if you're say booting from a USB, uh, you can load the entire of this operating system into RAM and it doesn't even require that much RAM to do it, you can then use that USB slot if you need to, say, uh, repartition another USB device or if you need that USB uh, port for something else. It's also got safe graphics and fail-safe modes and all that kind of stuff, but we're just going to use the default settings today because, well, I've never found a computer where the default settings don't work, quite frankly. This is a very good distribution of what it does, um, even though it only does one thing, but it does it very, very well. So uh, it doesn't have any fancy splash screens. It doesn't have any kind of uh, interesting sound effects for the introduction. In fact, you will see that it is actually quite a mundane-looking um, distribution, and uh, part of that, I guess, is from design, really, because... Um, it's designed to have substance over style. Um, okay, so it starts you off with um, setting up your keyboard, um, and it does ask you a few of these questions. Because I'm from the UK and I use UK keyboard, I can get by with the default settings here, but of course, if you use a different keyboard, um, and of course, uh, you might want to um, have a look at the, uh, the video options you've got, particularly if you're using maybe an older graphics card or whatever. But it sets you up quite nicely. It gives you a lot of options to boot into. Um, and then it boots you straight into this. And as you can see, it looks very basic. And of course, it boots straight into uh, Gparted, uh, which is great. This is the piece of software that you uh, have come to know and love on your uh, live CD, whatever distribution it might be, or even on your operating system itself. Okay, so this is the blank virtual hard disk drive that I've set up with my virtual machine. 
Um, so if you go to start a new partition, because this is how we divide the disk down, this is how, like if you bought a uh, brand new hard disk drive from the shops, this might be how it looks. Completely blank, completely barren, um, so we have to build it up from scratch. Okay, so even if you wanted to click a new, uh, to, to start a new partition, um, you need a new partition table. So for example, if your partitions were the parts of a car, for the, the engine, the suspension, the brakes, whatever, um, then your uh, partition table would be the chassis that holds it all together. So um, what you do here is you do device, create partition table. And of course, different people will want different options out of this list, um, but MS-DOS works just fine for today's purposes, um, as it does in most purposes. Um, now, I'm not a partition expert, but um, partly due, that's due to this being such an easy to use um, piece of software that I've never had to really get down into the nitty gritty of disk partitioning because it lets me do it quite easily. And uh, I'm kind of praising both the software and the distribution in the same breath here because the, the distribution's really only designed to run the software. And the software itself is pretty fantastic. It's certainly fixed more than a few computers for me. So anyway, now that we've got our partition table, uh, partition table um, all set up. It's still unallocated because we don't have the um, the partitions available. So let's start off with um, a good old what do we want? A swap partition. And we'll have about um, now. There's always a lot of discussion as to uh, how much swap, uh, how much you want to dedicate to a swap partition. I think I've got 10 gig, but I'm I'm on a one terabyte hard disk drive on my Linux partition, so. 10 gig is just you know I hardly I don't I don't use the full 10 gig, um, but uh, some people say 10 percent. Um, Google around for different opinions. Um, nowadays, in I guess from my experience, and this is only my personal experience, is that um, swap um, partition space isn't as important as it used to be because memory is now more abundant. Swap partition used to be as a substitute for RAM. Now RAM's pretty reasonable. Um, we don't we don't really need it as much but uh, uh, do a lot of research on this if you're particularly interested because there are a lot of differing opinions when it comes to um how to partition hard disks in, in any capacity so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to partition into this is how much this bar here is how much space we've got left so i'm going to do about half of that it's going to be a primary partition ext4 uh, you can even do um fat 16 fat 32 and ntsf NTFS, which are the Windows uh, partitioning uh, formats, which um, if you're fixing a Windows computer, then you might want to try to check that out. Okay, so we've got half here. We can label this root. Uh, you wouldn't label a root partition root. But, uh, but today, for the sake of uh, fun, I guess I am. And then you can uh, start a new partition, um, and this will be the home partition, I guess. And this automatically fills up the space. And there you go. You've very quickly just partitioned up your hard disk drive um, where you've got your swap partition, your root partition, and your home partition. Now, I haven't actually allocated these partitions to do what they're specifically said, except for the swap, because the swap uses a special file system. But when it comes in, when I go into, say, booting a Linux Mint, Ubuntu, well, any Linux distribution, really, um, then it will ask me to select which of these partitions you'd like me to use for home and which you'd like me to use for... Um, for root and everything else. So um, that really pretty much is, and, and then you click apply, it says, yeah, this can, basically what this does now is that um, the, comp the, the hard disk drive itself was completely blank as it was, but if, there, if it wasn't blank and you were just editing and changing around, um, then it would be telling you that you are wiping all the data from your hard disk drive beyond recovery. Also, another interesting thing about um, uh, the partition manager here is that you can actually resize it. You know, this can take a lot of time depending on um, uh, depending on what information is on your data. And to be honest, I've heard some horror stories that if you're resizing a, um, a partition, you can you can you're at risk of losing some of the data or all of the data on it. So if you are resizing uh, partitions, always a good idea to back up. To be honest, always a good idea to back up before even attempting to fix a machine, especially when you're going into partitioning because. You're gonna. You, there's a very real chance that you could lose your hard disk. The, the information on your hard disk drive. You can sort it out and recover it, and then reload from backup. But um, but it's not something that you want to um, take. You know, treat lightly. You can also move the partition as well. So, and you're moving our partition might cause your operating system to fail. Uh, of course, we don't have an operating system on it. Click apply. 
and then it's just going to yeah move it across and then you can uh, add in a new partition here which is going to be an unnamed one because we can and then what i could use that for i could use that as as the boot partition um which i've seen some people do and there you go there are limits to how many primary and logical and extended partitions you can have um it also comes with a web browser. You can change your screen resolution. Gives you a terminal emulator. It can even configure you to your network, which I've never had the um, the need to do. But that's it. That, in all its glory, is Gparted Live. Um, it's a distribution that every techie should have. They should have it burnt to a CD or a USB key and just have it in their diagnostic tools with everything else. Because, uh, well, like I say, it saved me from more than a few sticky situations. It's nice to have just a distribution that you can boot into from just about any machine imaginable. I've never had a problem booting into Gparted Live, any of the versions, anything like that. And uh, and it's always served me well. And um, I think that's about it for me today. Um, if you have any thoughts on Gparted or any particularly interesting stories where it's um, saved you before, let me know down in the comments section below. Um, and um, that's about it for me. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.